things happening as it is. So in the moment of a spiritual awakening, of a full-blown spiritual awakening, you get that too. It's like, oh, everything's happening perfectly the way it's supposed to happen. Because we think it's all about us as the individual. It's like me, me, me needs to change. Me needs to whatever. Yeah, maybe you do need to change. But that's the universe that's doing that, right? And, and it's manifesting through you, right? To play out your function, to do whatever it needs to do because we can't see ahead. We don't know what's going on in the future. We don't know any of that. But if, you, if a person has this non-dual spiritual awakening, it all becomes clear. Yeah. So even if I come back from the experience and I say, oh gosh, there's things I need to work on. That's what I'm supposed to do at yeah. the moment. Because when I came back from that experience, I started making clothes that I, I don't even sell them. I just make them for myself that says Praprahan in, in, in uh, Sanskrit. Right? People ask, what does that mean? I said, it means like what people would say, Parabrahman, right? But it's Praprahan. Mm. Right? And people say, oh, I just felt the need to do that because I need to express. Yes. Right? I, started to, um, I started doing the blog, which I try to write uh, an article these every day. And um, that's just something I felt like doing. Uh, I started doing, uh, working with... Uh, discipline stoners. What's your discipline? You a stoner? That's cool. So are we. I'm high a lot. It's weird to finally say that with pride. I'm high a lot. Being high has helped me with my anxiety. It's helped my social skills. Living from Anger Town. This plant just helped me chill out. Found focus. Found confidence. All of a sudden, I was productive. Less protective. More progressive. Yeah, we talk about stuff like I'm a next sommelier. But this is about a medicine, baby. We wish everyone a mindful life. It's been a helpful tool for us. Whatever the route to peace, it's each individual's journey. And the more we communicate, maybe we can all help each other out. Love and light. Welcome to Discipline Stoners Podcast. With your host, Eleven. And my name is Winnie. And we are the gateway drug to mindfulness. Welcome, Welcome back, back to another, another episode of Discipline Stoners. Stoners. I'm your host, Eleven. My name is Winnie. And, and we, we are, are the gateway, gateway drug, drug to mindfulness. mindfulness. And, and today, today, thank God, <gasps> our next guest is a certified meditation instructor, spiral, spiritual teacher of non-dualism, author of the transformative guide, Bodhi in the Brain, and founder of Yinergy Meditation, which we will get into. Please welcome Morgan O. Smith. <laughs> get your prayers up. Get my get pleasure. Get your prayers up. Get them up. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for thank being you here. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, and for my casual vibe I intro, we'll get into it how we met each other. But uh, Morgan and I know each other from Rise, an association in Toronto that's just like basically a, a creative, artistic kind of collective. And you've always been such a beautiful, strong, centered, guiding light. I think every community should be lucky enough to have someone kind of glowing this specific type of mindful light that you do. Nice. So it's a super honor to have you here to chat with us. So thank you for being here. You're obviously <laughs> very <sense>. humble <laughs> as well. Like, like, for real? Okay, okay, I'll take it. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Oh, man, you radiate peace. Yeah, yeah I try to. Yeah, Why do yeah. you do that? <laughs> That's the first question. Why do you do Why that? Why do you radiate peace? Let's, let's for our... Uh, audience that may not know of you i'd love to just know your um background your history um and what brought you to meditation especially hmm. like specifically because we are huge meditators and we find that most of the people that we know don't meditate on a regular basis and it's kind of one of the only things where i've been like like i don't care you know what you do you smoke you smoke weed you dr drink whatever like i do live your life but like you should meditate like i feel like meditation really is something for everyone it's the only max out that we're like you need to like do I, this. yeah like, that's kind well, at least of most people there's some people who shouldn't okay oh, yeah there's certain people that may that may want to avoid really? meditative practices yeah but it's a small it's a small percentage of people that 
uh, it may not be um, beneficial for. Why would that be the case? Who are these people? Because you're our, you are, I think you're the first me our meditation OG yeah. on this. We're usually the ones that are like, hey, here's what hey, it is. But like, I think we're <laughs> going to learn from so you good. today. Yeah, we are. <laughs> so yeah, it's, uh, today would probably be a great day for me to talk about that if it doesn't scare people off because stay. that's the thing. So I hope people stay. But um, meditation is not everything that people say it is. Mm. No, it, it can be, yes. Uh, uh, but uh, it's kind of like um, it's kind of like looking at a muscle man, like a, a bodybuilder, a champion bodybuilder, and uh, and you don't take in, into consideration what he or she had to go through to look like that. Oh, so it's like it's like that. Oh, so, that's interesting. Yeah. So there's certain people, uh, and this can happen to almost anyone, but there are certain people who may want to avoid it because of their um, because of their mental uh, makeup. Oh. So there's certain people that may try meditation, and uh, it may cause it could cause health, pro health, uh, mental health issues in certain people. Really? Yeah, in certain people, like schizophrenia. Kind those of. things, or, those or things can come up for certain people because when they sit in a perspective and they have trouble differentiating between like I call it God or nature speaking through your third eye and your ego identity's perspective, and like that battling voice may cause some tremors. You mean like that's one out of many. One of the functions. Yeah, one, yeah. one, one out of many, depending on the person's uh, mental makeup, wow, uh, the genetic profile, and all that. So yeah, things like that could happen. How might one? Um, know that, yeah. if meditation might be beneficial and or not for them that's the hard part yeah yeah it's like it's one of those things where in most cases you just have to just try it and see where that takes you in the month period um, yeah. in two weeks to a month to see what's coming up but it depends though because when I first started meditating with with brainwave entrainment over 20 years ago right. a lot of mental stuff did come up but I kept, I kept pursuing well, that's the yeah. thing. I don't want, like, okay, as much as that's a great piece, and we've never landed on that, because we are like, meditation We're like, this is everyone <laughs> do this. <laughs> but, but, so Better yourself. I, I also don't want people that truly just think it's hard to use that as an that's excuse. An excuse. Like, exactly. I don't have one of those type of brains. Morgan said so on Discipline Stoners. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. no, you, you <laughs> need to build discipline. And that hurts. Mm -hmm. So it's, that's a very fine line. I've never even considered that. But you have a very specific type of meditation program that you've built and that you learned of. And it's yeah. kind of amazing because it's science and metaphysical, meaning it's actually vibration of frequencies and brain waves. Can you tell us about that a little bit, the program? Well, the, the program that I developed is called uh, Energy. Energy Meditation. Love that name. Yeah, so Energy. And uh, it's a brainwave entrainment program. For those who don't know what brainwave entrainment is, there is different types. So the types that I use is uh, binaural beats and monaural beats. But binaural beats pretty much is if you took the basics of two tones and you play a tone of a, a frequency in one ear and you play another tone that's slightly different from the frequency in the, other, in the one ear, in the other ear, the center of your brain will, will uh, create a, the difference of the two tones. It will make a beat frequency of those two pitch frequency tones. I never knew that's what was happening. Playing with yeah. perception by subtle offness. The subtle offness. And that will entrain the two hemispheres of your brain. Cool. Because yeah. it has to decide a center point, it right? It's like a center point. The eyes focusing on something. It's like you know you're not focusing on that, so it's like creates the space in between. That is so cool. The, the space in between. Wow. And that will create a beat frequency, and that beat frequency will um, uh, resonate with the the brain waves. That will resonate to that particular frequency. So if you're playing uh, the two tones, so just say if you're playing a tone of 10 hertz in one ear. And 11 hertz in the other ear. 11. You're 11. You see, <laughs> you'll be, you'll 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 create a beat frequency of one hertz mm. within within the center of your brain. Because the difference. Because oh. of the difference of the oh. two tones. Okay. Yeah. It focuses on the simplified. It's nature. <laughs> see, I like 11. My guy. <laughs> Love, bro. I like this guy. Have you always been spiritual from a young age, or what? Well, did you find this? I wouldn't say I was spiritual. I grew up religious. Like mm -hmm. religious okay. in a Christian in a Christian home, uh, my father my father is a church bishop. Uh, back then he was a church he was a church uh, he was a pastor. So I grew up in that almost all my life. Well, okay. up to the age of eighteen, and that's when I left. I left home. So when I left home, I left the church and tried to find my own way. Did you okay? When you left home, you left the church. So mm -hmm. when you were going, when you were practicing, um, growing up, you felt a disconnect or or not part of, or what <laughs> was the reason that you left? I was questioned by the age of 16, 15, 16, I was questioning everything. Everything that I was taught didn't make sense to me. So I needed to find something for myself. I didn't know what it was. That's young to yeah. be questioning. Yeah, yeah. I, had to find, <laughs> I had to find whatever that was for myself. So I started questioning it. But at the age of 17, I got sick. 
I got I caught a, a throat infection and I was on some antibiotics. And that night, I can't remember how long I was sick for. I could have been sick for probably about a week. And that night, uh, I woke up and there was this big giant angel-like being wearing a white robe, face full of light, pure light. It seemed like it was angry and it was staring down at me. Mm. It was just crazy, yeah, this was insane. It was staring down at me. And so what I remember at, the, at this time, the, this angelic being took my bed that I was sleeping on and flipped it over with the bed on top of me. So I'm on the ground and the bed is on top of me. I remember crawling from underneath the bed that was on top of me upside down and I ran into my parents' room to tell them what just took place. They came running into my room and my bed was totally intact. Nothing has changed, nothing. There was no angelic being in my room, but that's what kind of set the stage for me. So you knew Whoa. there was a, yeah. another dimension speaking to your perspective from that point on, you knew that I, I didn't know any of that. I just <laughs> so, <laughs> I saw an angel in my room, and I thought about <laughs> Jacob and the and, and the wrestling with the angel in the Bible. I thought about I thought about all the different angels that I've heard about and read about in the Bible. That's the only thing I associated with at that time. The imagery kept yeah. you in that narrative to some degree. Wow! Yeah, I forgot about it for a bit and went on, did my thing, went into in the, into the music industry, and when that fell apart, I went into comedy and I did comedy for for, for many years. And then I ended up doing a TV show for nine out of those out of those twelve years, and so um, good. at the end of my at the end of the the the, the, the closing of my show because it, it lasted for uh, uh, nine seasons. The last two seasons wow, so is when um, something happened, and I started meditating with binaural beats with another program, and then one thing led to another, and then when the show ended, I took two years off from the industry, and tried to find myself, and then after that, I went into nonprofit. A nonprofit work for a nonprofit organization, and then a few years in, I had my first spiritual awakening, and that's when, and then two years later, I met these guys. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we all feel. It's like once yeah. we found that community, we found a deeper part of ourselves, and then we continue to express purely from that point yeah. on. Yeah. Shout out, Rise. I shouldn't say two years later. It was probably because no, my math is off because the awakening happening in two thousand and eight. And they ended up meeting you guys like uh, uh, 2012 yeah. ish. I yeah. met you a little later, but 2012 ish, I met most of the, the Rise crew. I may have met you that yeah. year. I just can't remember. Yeah, the, but I, I met you. I think early 2013 actually. I got maybe early 2013. Yeah, it was the first yeah. Rise um, oh, showcase. Showcase. And Javon was performing, and I was perform. I was recording yes. with Javon Epic, and I went with him. But then I started that big cipher in the lobby. The, soft, the cipher in the and lobby. People were like, "What the fuck? That Monday. was lit." So, who is this guy? <laughs> Yeah, this guy amazes me. That I don't know how he <laughs> does what he does, but <laughs> I first saw this guy. I'm like, damn, this white guy is sick. And that's crazy because that's like ten years ago now, and he's way better now. <laughs> it, so. it was it was it was the right it breeding ground for me to feel seen and expand into myself in that way. It was beautiful. So thank wow. you, you'll forever yeah. be in my story in that way. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> what? Sorry. No, no, go, go. no go. I was, I'm shifting back Please. to, okay. Um, what is, what did your, if you won't mind sharing, and it's totally fine if you don't want to, but what did a, your spiritual awakening feel like, look like? What did, like, what, what is that? What, like? a, what is a spiritual awakening, you know? Like, uh, a lot of people usually get this wrong. When people say that they have a spiritual awakening, they usually have like a peak experience. Right. right. So you'll know when you have a spiritual awakening. Oh so, my yes. God, that's so true. Can yeah. you yeah. define peak experience? Well, a peak really. experience could be profound. <laughs> it could be a sense of oneness. It could be all of that, but it goes away. Yeah. So yes. you, you hit this peak, uh, you come down, you're like, oh my God, that was incredible. But when I speak in a, spir a spiritual awakening, something will change. Like there will be a transformation of some kind when you have a spiritual awakening, when you mm -hmm. realize that you're not the body, you're not the mind, you're not whatever, the, whatever you're not the ego. You're none of these things. And then you realize what you actually are from your actual core. Yeah. And when, when that experience is over, um, your perspective has changed. And it, that will stick with you like, yeah. for the rest of your life. So and your behavior. That alone, uh, depends. Like your behavior will change, but it doesn't mean it will change in all areas. Because we're talking about the psyche. And the psyche is very complex. So it may take a number of, uh, of, of experiences and just um, changes that will happen throughout your, your journey mm. that will change. Because when someone has a spiritual awakening, it doesn't mean that they had a spiritual awakening to all that is. Yes. Because you're psychic okay. and able to handle okay. it. Right? At least most people. There, is, there, are the, there are the odd person where all that could, can blossom all at once. Um, but the psyche is taking 
remember the psyche is 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 is, is, is realizing that it has that is capable of dying in that moment. So the psyche will do everything it can do to hold on. So it may let go of certain aspects of itself, but it may not let go of the whole thing. Right. But even a small aspect of that is very, very powerful. Because what I had in 2008, was it 2008? Yeah, I think 2008. Um, it, was so, it was so profound and so sublime that when it happened, I was speechless for two weeks. I, like I was able to talk to people, but I could not talk about that experience yeah. for two weeks because I couldn't believe what just happened to me. Oh my uh, but to answer your question, what does it feel like? What it, um, in that experience is what is the first time I had the realization that I am that I is that I am God. Oh. Yes. Yeah. So it was the first realization, but not only that I realized that I am this creator, but everything um, in all of creation, everything in, in all of existence, is this same creator. So that happened to me my, my very first time. Right, so um, we talked about earlier. I, ne I mentioned that I don't eat uh, animal products. It's only because in that moment uh, I, I became everything. So I was I was also the animals. Uh, I was animals. I was uh, reptiles. I was microscopic creatures. I was everything. And so and and I had the experience of what it felt like when an animal goes through um, uh, uh, being being killed. So I had I had that sense of empathy while it was happening. So when I came out of the experience. It, I didn't change right away. It took about, because that happened in January, March, April, I think in April of, 20, of 20, 2008. And then by September, by September, uh, I, I just, I called, called it quits. I stopped eating meat. So I remember the day that it happened that I stopped. I was at work at the time and I made the decision to stop. And I have never looked back since then. Oh my yeah, God. Even though I had many cravings after that. Yeah. Um, but I, I just made that change right, right at that moment. I never looked back from that change. So it was an wow. energetic, spiritual understanding that, that locked into almost like, I can't partake in cruelty. Like you snapped in. So that's what I mean. Like the behavior takes a while to unravel. Once you have that understanding, <clears throat> I had that experience with. And I still fuck up. I'm still an ego and we all do. individual, we still right? Yeah, we still fuck up. But like in 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 the, I was resonating with what you're saying. Like you can't go back once you understand from that perspective of like oneness. I was labeling it earlier when we were chatting. Mm -hmm. It's like I can't condemn that person if I understand how they got there. So there's no separation between me and them. We're the same like pure like zero point Tao energy of the yeah. universe and you've, you, you've grown like that into this type of tree that has that sort of sway and I've grown like this into my sway but like the fact that we're all in the same garden I should be celebrating not the fact that you're a different tree acting differently than me exactly like so it's like yeah it's like and I feel my ego break in that moment like if I'm not fighting them then who am I yeah, who am I Right. So it's like, I feel like I, you have to choose sides, but <clears throat> you get to a point where you don't need to choose sides. Both sides are equally valid um, and they're playing out their purpose for whatever reason. How do you value yourself without <laughs> progress towards the other side, Morgan? <laughs> wow. Just that, up. Just, up, yeah. Up. You have to go up. You gotta, you gotta go up and you have to go in. You have to just embrace. You have to embrace the perspective of love. Because so and hate. And hate. You gotta embrace them both. Yeah. You gotta accept them. You gotta accept them for. You gotta accept people for who they are, what they are, because whatever they're doing, they're playing out their purpose, even though they may, may not be aware of that. Mm. So that leads into. Mm. I was gonna ask you when I was listening to both of you have that conversation. I was gonna ask you if you personally believe in polarity, or um, if everything sort of sits in this divineness that isn't polar. It just is. Both are true. Um, mm. I believe in polarity within uh, like the illusion you. of Maya. <laughs> yeah, so within Love Maya, which is the illusion, Maya just means uh, uh, not what it appears to be. So everything is not what it appears to be. So it appears that we have polarity. And, uh. and that's real within the illusion. Um, ha! Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, that's real within the illusion. But Holy. The illusion, there is no such thing as polarity. I don't know if I'm ready for you, Morgan. Uh, yeah, oh, I'm, I'm getting yeah. some. <laughs> Overwhelming sensations in my throat. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, so okay, okay. <laughs> I don't, I'm sorry. I'm not usually rendered speechless, but I'm a that really hit me uh, pretty hard. Reality. Do you think I brought Morgan here to lie? In the <laughs> illusion. Hey, you brought me here for a reason, I guess, Come right? On, bro. Okay, so if we choose to look at this as an illusion, 
there are constructs within that illusion that we are are uh, or rules or or there we're playing by rules in this illusion labels yes labels functions rules, functions functions yeah. and so when something comes across our path that feels not pleasing or 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 feels like a big challenge or you feel like you just can't deal with something overwhelmed how do we navigate out of that perspective when you're in it? Like when you're in the shit, how do you get back to the understanding that like you are God and that this is not real because it feels so real sometimes? I would say, I would say understanding is not enough. Yeah. Right? Understanding is just understanding. It's an intellectual thing. You have to get to the point when you truly realize that you are God, that you are but a hunt. Does everyone get there? Eventually, maybe not in their lifetime, but eventually everyone gets there because that's just the purpose of what, that's what God's doing. Right. You know, because God is doing the opposite of itself so it can find itself, just for fun, because there's nothing else to do. Because there's nothing else to do. <laughs> the it's, a, it's, exists, it's a little so, trickster. You know, <laughs> it's a bit of a trickster, yeah. So there's, there's nothing else to do, so yeah. it, just, it does that because it's the only thing that exists. So it, it says, okay, you know what? This is boring. Let me uh, divide myself and, uh, and see what happens out of that interaction. So it builds a relationship between itself and other. And then after when that gets boring, it decides to divide, it, divide itself into four. And then they have a relationship that gets boring. And then into eight and then to, and then to uh, um, 16 and, and so on expansion. and so on. And so it just keeps expanding, expanding. So you have the big bang all the way out. And then it will just, it will, it will expand. And then after when it does its thing, forming itself as a universe, which is really a torus, so it has like, it's like a donut shape hole in the middle where the black hole is, and it will expand, 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 and then it will um, come right back to itself. Right. So it creates a big bang and a big boom. Mm. And it just keeps doing that for eternity. <laughs> yeah, I love that part if you're such a, oh my God, next level, I love that. Okay, now using that philosophy, I just, I want like Abraham Hicks with you right now. <laughs> I want to like give you problems because here's the mental plague I see holding society back in terms of people existing as their ego identity. I'll be better when. I will feel fulfillment in the future at this point when. What can we give to those folks that are basing their happiness in the future? It's like they're scheduling their fulfillment till later on as opposed to knowing that right now is perfect. But, but again, um, the understanding is not enough, mm. right? Anyone can try to understand something, but it doesn't mean I feel that emotionally. I, I may understand, I may intellectually understand something. It doesn't mean I emotionally um, understand it or embrace it. So that's why an awakening is really important because an awakening leads to all that. At least, it, so if it doesn't lead to all that, it was probably just a peak experience, a very profound one, but just a peak experience. But it can happen in two ways. It can happen in a sudden bang, or it can happen gradually, where there's mm. people who come to that conclusion, but they didn't have the big, that big experience. It just happened gradually as their, as their mind started to uh, transform and change. Mm -hmm. But for others like myself, even though I've been working towards that for a very, very long time, mm. I got the big... <laughs> yeah, you got one. Yeah, like left you, got, me you got a big one. Broken. Like I was when I was that, especially the last time. Um, well, I can't say the last. Time, I had been two more times after my big, my big blowout. Um, but what had happened to me in uh, December, December fourteenth, twenty nineteen. Um, I was so I, I was down. Like I was having, uh, I was having spasms. My whole body fell apart. I couldn't, I couldn't uh, operate anything on my own. Everything just did its own thing. It felt like the Kundalini energy, the serpent energy, oh, wow. yeah. was traveling through my entire body. Yes. And I burst. Every uh, cell and every molecule and every atom in my body all shouted out with one voice, I am God. And the, the, the top of my head, the crown chakra, it opened up. And every petal made out of light just fell down, hitting the ground and dissipating as it hit the ground, uh, just petals of light. Trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of pebble, uh, petals hit the ground as I broke into this absolute oneness of all that is and all that could ever be and all that ever was. And, wow. Yeah. Is that uh, eyes open or eyes closed out of curiosity? I believe my eyes were closed. Okay. Yeah. 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 But it, in a sense, felt like it was both. Yeah. Yes. I was as open yeah, and yeah, closed. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I you feel see. that. Yeah. You could see. Yeah, yeah I can see. <laughs> I can see. <laughs> It, it was, it's a, a full open awareness because you don't see anything with your eyes, with your eyes closed in that experience because there's nothing to see because if God is absolutely everything and there's no distinction between subjective and objective, 
what is there to see because yeah. it can't see itself but it's fully aware of itself so in that moment i was aware of of of, of all past all present all future yeah. all alternative um alternate realities i was i was aware of all beings um, all non-sentient beings. I was aware of all solar systems, all galaxies, all uh, all uh, universes, because it was a multiverse. Yes. I was aware of myself as the the one and true only Brahman. I was aware of the, the the multiple Big Bangs that took place, well, how everything took place. In that moment, I was aware of absolutely everything. And that's really and not knowing who I was as Morgan. Yeah. Because right? I was in that moment. Yes. I was uh, Brahman. It's hard to eye open to truly. Yeah, yeah it's, tr it's hard to truly accept from an ego human perspective that it happens all at once. But I understand that like I, I, I keep that threshold open a little bit of genius autism. That's how I freestyle. That's my secret, you know, <laughs> and mm. it's like, uh, uh, and like, you're right. It's like a it's not even a full second. You're like, there it is. But here's the thing too. There it is, all of it. A nanosecond feels exactly the same as eternity. Oh, and, they, and yeah. you can almost freeze it and look around like an index, like you could just like go through the Akashic records one by one and take a second and then you come back into this dimension and you're right. It's while while keeping insane. your head straight. So you're looking <laughs> around while keeping your head straight, and looking up, looking down all simultaneously, all at the same time. Yeah. And, it's, and, and in that moment, I understood yoga for the, like, I like really understood yoga because in that moment I did every, I wasn't doing this physically, but in my mind, I was doing every yoga pose, every asana mm. simultaneously in that moment. I was the entire universe doing its own pose like every single pose that you could ever imagine <laughs> happened in that moment yes. it was so profound and yes. it blew my mind to the point where i'm just like Arr. i was i was left there bawling and yes. and, and crying well, tears gotta, of joy and laughing in that moment and yeah and i just fell apart um but for the very first time i truly understood what it meant to be vulnerable oh yeah oh in that <laughs> moment and that's this all happened after months after meeting a spiritual guru uh, a spiritual guru by the name of Paramahamsa Vishwananda. Mm. I went to see him in September. It happened. This experience happened in December. I went to see him in December, uh, in September, September, September 3rd of 2019. He just looked in my eyes for 20 seconds. Wow. He put his hands on my head, looked in my eyes for 20 seconds, and sent me on my way. As I walked away, I started to feel the twitches in my body, which I felt when I used to do five meal DMT. I felt all the same stuff from doing right. that. So I felt all the twitches. I'm like, what the hell's going on? This feels exactly the same as what I felt after doing five meal DMT. And then this stuff kept happening. I ended up having a spiritual experience um, in November of that year. And then in December, uh, while I was meditating, it happened again. And then boom, everything Wide just fell open. apart. Wide open. It sounds like your body was like prepping itself. Oh yeah, so all the years of doing brainwave and training with my program and all that, I was just, it was prepping myself. It was uh, um, purifying the nadis. Nadis are like the subtle, uh, energy channels within your body and you have thousands and thousands of these nadis and all of, all of these nadis have to be purified because they're all stuck with karmic goop oh. so through meditation yoga and changing up the diet you're you're purifying the nadis by getting rid of all the karmic goop that happens through anytime you get um, excited or anytime you go through any uh, bad situations you accumulate this karmic goop that stays stuck in your nadis and you have to purify all that stuff so that once uh, universe uh, universal energy can travel through all the nadis all at once you can have the full-blown kundalini awake because I had end up having a non-dual awakening and a kundalini awakening at the same time. Oh, yeah. So both happened. Just one kind of happened after the other. Like it, 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 it started off non-dual, and that was the most profound thing. I was good with just that. No, <laughs> you <Yeah>. were like. <laughs> and after I was coming back down and realizing who I actually was as Morgan, the kundalini awakening happened. Oh, just one. Just fast yeah, track to the next right level. To the next thing. Just give it to him right now. Yeah. And um, yeah, that that left me that left me broken. I'm still healing from that experience. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm still prepping. I lost uh, for years, for the last uh, four years, on and off, I lost sexual function. Oh, fuck. That's how, that's how powerful this was. Wow. You know, and that's just a challenge on its own. Yeah. Right? No but th that all shut down. The energy manifestations yeah. in our physical body are <clears throat> directly tied and are the same thing to what's happening in our Merkaba in the spirit around us. And like, we sometimes forget about that pairing and like can condemn the body, but you're accepting it as the manifestation of self Just and going through it. Going right through it. Okay. Just going right through it. Yeah. So do you Respect. think that, that that was like a, was that an offering sort of those those challenges that you went are go are going through, went through, um, to for for growth, for further expansion, for for an, you're preparing for something else, another 
type of. I hope that's the case. Always. Or yeah. I just fucked myself up. <laughs> 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 I hope oh, everything you said. I hope that's what it is. Yeah, all that stuff takes a long time. So fuck. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not so worried about my twitches now. <coughs> I had a couple twitches. You had a couple going twitches, on. right? Yeah, yeah. All right. So just Fucking like just the goop. Part of the process. Getting the the goop, getting the goop, goop out. out. Right. Dude, getting the karmic goop out. I had uh, I have some challenges right now with keeping my sword sheathed. That's what I'm. That's what I'm working through. Non-reactive in my aggression. Wow. Because a blessing and a curse, right? The flame. I'm going to focus flame. that mental energy and rhyme for a decade. <laughs> but then also it's like, as a human being, it's like, <sighs> yeah. not in survival anymore. Don't dominate everyone around you. Relax. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> you know, so I'm adapting yeah. what I know spiritually into my ego identity as a person constantly. And like, I haven't had that experience. I've been slowly implementing like one brick, one chip, Which, one yeah. puzzle piece at a time. So this side of my body shaking hands, this side of my body swinging. It's swinging. <laughs> so uh, I'm like, I am duality of self. That 11, the symbolism, so. yeah. you know? So yeah. it's like, I am actually looking to be, how can I say this, as an artist, wrong, almost. I'm embracing being wrong sometimes so I can then fill up that darkness with light it's like i'm playing back and forth but when you had your like, mm. <laughs> blast off moment it's like you can't even entertain the missteps anymore but also keep in mind though <laughs> keep in mind though like because i didn't say this here while, while being interviewed by by you guys but the the uh, in terms of spiritual awakenings i've had about like over 50 of these things right yeah, they happen so many times that there is no way that i could have handled that experience in 20 right in okay so, i see without those follow without the the ones that led up to that. So I'm tiptoeing. Right? So yeah, I'm so, tip yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's supposed to be that way because your psyche just knows best. It's like, listen, you will I can't hand, yeah, yeah, you will, you'll die. Like, like this. Yeah, because this is what you will look like. Yeah. this is right. behind right? you. So, just, you right? yeah. So you got to you got to do this gradually. Yeah, it because it does take time. Because I feel like I've had a lot of peak moments. I mm. I've dabbled in the spiritual awakening, but through mushrooms. So I don't know if that counts. <laughs> It does count, well, even though there's a lot of people who are against it. Okay. Um, but my, my whole thing is um, it's long, as long as you, you, you get there. But the thing is what uh, plant medicines can do is um, not everyone can sit there and, and, and do the practice waiting for these experiences to happen. Because for some people, I know people, well, I've heard of people who've been meditating for 40, 50 years, and it's never happened, mm. right? Maybe by taking a substance and adapting that within, adopting that within their spiritual practice, yeah. they may have at least had a, a glimpse of that, so they can, have, it could set them on that path, right? Mm -hmm. um, plant medicines. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not really for plant medicines when they're done recreationally, but I'm all for them when they're done when they're used in, within the practice. Intention. Yeah. yeah. So with my my whole thing was when I came up before I even came up with the energy, my whole idea we started running experiments of what would happen if I did if we did brainwave entrainment. With, with the psychedelic mm. and do this as a practice. Mm -hmm. So I would do our brainwave meditation, including with traditional meditation methods, every single day. Mm -hmm. We'll do them every day. And then once, once in a while, on occasion, I would, I would use a psychedelic and test to see where I'm at. Mm. Right? And then through Ooh. the psychedelics. Yeah, so you can use the two together. I don't see the point of separating the two. The two yeah. work perfectly together. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and I you agree. use that as a guide. It's a tool. See where you're, yeah, it's a tool. I, to see how, in just to see where you're at. at. Yeah. Because you can take. If I take, a, say for example, I took a person who's a non-meditator, and we took the same amount of, I say we took three to five grams of, of psilocybin, we're not going to have the no, same experience. No, you're certainly yeah, Versus not. someone who's been doing this training for many, many years. Yes. Because the nodes yeah. are more open, the brain is, is more synchronized, the, the nervous system is more purified. Yeah. We are not going to have the same yeah. uh, experience. And I've done this with hundreds of people, and in most cases, it's never the same. We've had that yeah. experience when we hosted... Um, <clears throat> We call them metaphysical workshops, but like they are also paired with plant medicine, the latter half of them. And we do everything from like fresh juices to only like veggie stuff to like uh, flow workshops to like workshops. Uh, uh, meditations and yoga, yoga and stuff. And you're right, the people who are newer to those kind of self entranced or like in those mindful practices that bring you to that space. It's like you're waiting in a train station and then still having comes through and it's like, yeah. and like picks you, up and goes. picks you up and goes. Like one girl who was a meditator, uh, she changed jobs. She left her own relationship. She's like happier, glowing more now. And then some other folks who like were like, I don't really meditate. Like when they first got there and like we actually, 
didn't invite those people originally. They were right, <laughs> which was funny, but we were glad that we had the different data just because I, I knew that, but they ended up in one class. And that was great. Yeah. But it was a breakdown situation. Mm. It was the ego wants to hold on, and if they don't feel seen by exterior, then everyone's going to have a... So it was something to manage, and it's like wow. I'm, I'm trying to have a filter process of yeah. like, do you meditate? How can I learn beyond you just saying yes, you meditate? <laughs> because I'm like almost can't. But they need. Do we to have somebody, any yeah. starter practices for people who really like suffer from you know insane monkey mind? I think that's the biggest thing when I talk to people is like everyone's like my brain won't shut up like it just won't shut up and yeah. it, it will make me go crazy if i try and sit there and listen to it and allow it to run my life you know mm -hmm. which is what kind of what they're doing anyways mm -hmm. um yeah, by, by not calming it yeah, down yeah. but do we have any like starter tools that don't feel so scary every time we bring up meditation people get tight they get they're like so i don't it's almost like they feel guilty that they don't meditate it's like bringing up money good. honestly for some people it's like people uh, who have a lack mentality yeah. or, or stuck in poverty as soon as you bring up money you see like they're assholes tighten up you know what i mean it's like it's all good breathe breathe, breathe. yeah you gotta let more in you gotta breathe 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 and like same thing with meditation they're like oh i have shame because i don't i haven't looked at that part of my life and then it feels like we're attacking them sometimes but like it's something they end up attacking you just from just from bringing it up oh I've it been does attacked how many times just from just bringing it up and people feel like and defensive. they're like yeah they're you know, like defensive and i'm like i'm not I'm attacking you yeah I'm yeah just giving you the best advice i can possibly give you when people say what can i do to change my life i say meditation you keep bringing that shit up <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's a reason why i'm bringing it up because it works yes. <laughs> and they're like everyone and then it Fuck. compounds it compounds and it basically to this point where you say like did you meditate today someone will be like you're not my dad you're like, not my dad yeah like stop oh, bothering me with this shit I'm like, you know what I mean? well, i'll meditate when i feel like doing it. okay yeah you do when you right. feel like doing it you seem pretty right, upset so. right now though yeah. So like, why don't you give it a shot? Just give it, just give it a shot. You know, it doesn't it can't hurt. Just give it a shot. Is how long? I guess well, how long do we think we have to meditate? Like practice the practice for before it starts mm. feeling like. <clears throat> Because it feels invasive, I think, to some people sometimes. They're like, whoa, that is not how I want to start my morning because all of these these things come up. They and come then up, you're like, yeah. I don't know. If you don't have any way to deal with those things or if you're not ready to look at them, maybe that, that might be like maybe some people aren't supposed to try meditation at that point. But you yeah, connect with you your should, God. You know. But that's but as a thing. Like God according to whom? because everyone has a different uh, take on what that is. Mm -hmm. And if you saw the truth, that would scare you because you were told your whole life that God was this yeah. or God is that. And then when you see what you, especially when you realize that you're the, the thing the whole time, that could be scary when you come back into your ego. Yeah. Right. So not everyone would be ready for that. So it is, it is what it is. It's like a case by case basis. Case by case, right? Because like how long would it take for each? It depends on each individual. Because uh, for me, when I first uh, started doing brainwave entrainment meditation, um, one of the first things that happened to me, and I say this all the time, so I don't even say this with shame, is I ended up having a, a wet dream. Yeah. Yeah, but it was a wet dream that was dry. There was nothing there. It was just a wet <laughs> dream that felt, and I was like, what? I was dreaming about a girl who I met, uh, who I wasn't even attracted to, uh, and I met her, we had dinner with, with one of my best friends, and then that night, I woke up and I felt that I was wet from waist all the way down like just wet and when i i wasn't wet at all so that was oh. my first that was my first experience in it. and after that uh i think it was weeks or maybe it could have been months after it was so long ago because this is over 20 years ago um i i always forget the name of this term for this phobia agro agrophobia agrophobia is that the fear the of the outdoors oh i don't Agra, know agrophobia i don't know i'm always saying it wrong <laughs> but um i ended up in that state for a week i was afraid to go outdoors for a week and i'm an entertainer like especially back then i was a stand-up comic uh, TV host. Good thing I wasn't shooting uh, my show at the time, but I was afraid to go outside for a week. So is that because something like why 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 are you afraid to go outside after that experience? Because what happens, um, your your all your life, you're you're disowning things, things that happens that okay. could be within your culture. Your culture and within your culture would say that this thing we don't do that thing, or that thing is wrong, or I hate when people do this. And as a child, you hear you hear this information. It could be coming from your parents, your caregivers your religious leaders, whoever it is. And then if you have an impulse, what your mind does is like, oh, we don't do that. So you take it and you bury it into your, your subconscious part of the mind. So when you start to meditate, where you're stimulating the, the subconscious part of the mind, and if you go deeper, it could be the unconscious of, of the mind, that stuff comes up. 
it comes back, it comes out to haunt you. It's not there to haunt you. It just wants to release itself. It just the, wants the mind to be needs to seen let go. It and needs to be heard. Seen and be heard. It needs to express. That's. But you, you're frightened by the experience, and it um, it could be that's what what could happen when you're disowning. So you're you're like you're disowning your shadows. Yeah. All right. So when you start meditating, uh, those things are going to eventually come up. Especially for myself, who I've been meditating every day for at least an hour, or right? sometimes up to four hours. So I, I do this day in and day out. I just do this every single day. So all the stuff that came up. I just, it came up. Good thing about it is I've already read about this stuff. So I, w I wasn't really necessarily prepared for it, but it, it did prep me in a sense yeah. where uh, I knew that I could trust the, pro the, the process. So yeah. I just kept going. I just kept going. And as the, the, the uncomfortable material came up, um, the rule that I was taught by my teacher at the time is whatever happens, let it be okay. It just, he just kept saying that. That's the late Bill Harris, who, who created the, the Holosync program. It's very similar to the one that I, that I created. But his thing was, whatever happens, let it be okay. Mm -hmm. So as these things came up, um, it was hard, but I tried to just let it be okay. So your job is to watch it without bias and without judgment and just let it happen. Yeah. So much came up for me there. I think like one of my big, biggest moments in my adulthood was um, like going for a walk when I was feeling um, very in a state of depression and just starting this self dialogue of like, hey, like, I don't know why you're here, but like you're allowed to be here. Like I don't know if I've ever told you that before, but like mm. if you want to exist right now, like I, I'm not going to push you down anymore. Mm. And I couldn't believe how fast I experienced relief from the symptoms of dep depression when I just said that, when I just had a small conversation yeah. with whatever it was I was feeling <clears throat> and being like, hoof, come on out. Like, show me what you got kind of thing, you, you know? Yeah. And it was nothing. There were, I was pushing against nothing. <laughs> because the, the suffering comes out of the resistance. Exactly. Uh, once you learn to accept, the suffering goes away. Yes. <sighs> it's almost like we're addicted to <clears throat> the suffering. I've been playing with the idea of the pain body a lot. The pain body. Because I feel this thing expand. When I get a little ping, we call it, <clears throat> Things are going my way is an ego identity, and I like that. But hold on, someone disagrees with me, something changes that I couldn't have anticipated, or I do something wrong and I can't forgive myself, so I mm -hmm. get a ping, and it starts. Yeah. Now I'm walking around like this, easier to bump things to ping me one more time. One more time. <gasps> no, I'm expanding more, right? And it's yeah. like, you gotta like, Resist the resistance. Resist the resistance. <laughs> like yeah. stop yourself from pushing against because that's the thing that's like, <gasps> I hope someone doesn't offend me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. and then I'm going to explode and it's going to keep getting better. But it's like you stop yourself from fighting against it and it starts to like shrink for a minute. But it's like it's that fuel. And I think we're kind of addicted to that. We're addicted to it. Like yeah. cortisol. We, we, we love <laughs> our pain. <laughs> right? Because it's the same thing. I, I use this analogy a lot. It's kind of the same way with, if, say, you break your leg and then you, you get a cast. Mm. And then what happens when you get a cast and you show, back, you show up to work? Everyone, or they're trying to help you. Hey, oh my gosh, I, I, we missed you. Oh my gosh, are you okay? They sign your cast. Um, and that feels good. Yeah. People, uh, they pull a seat up for you. They try to help you down the stairs, help you to the elevator. It feels good. And that's what happens. Every time we feel pain, we, we feel victimized and we want to... Um, we want we want people to 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 give us attention. I made myself sick. Even as of recently, I was physically hurting myself. I fell off my bike last year um, because I was not listening oh. to myself yeah. and not paying attention in that moment. Motorcycle? No, just a, uh, just a regular bicycle. I was totally fine. But um, we we joke we joked recently because I've also been getting hurt doing just this thing that I shouldn't have been doing. And I was like, God, my body, every time I'm not doing what my higher being, like where I'm, sh what I should be doing, where I should be focused, Will I get physically hurt. Like I hurt Beats myself, on, not on purpose, <laughs> yeah. obviously, no, 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 no. but just, just like, I'm just, just like, like, oh my God. Thud. Like I'm not allowed to not listen anymore because I'm physically hurting myself. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's good. It's a good tool yeah. because then I can, it helps me stay on track. Stay on track, right? Harsh yeah. punishment, though. <laughs> like, sometimes, sometimes that's it's needed. It's the only thing that sometimes I would the, listen yeah, to. It's the only mm -hmm. thing that you listen to. But so. I also like when I, you know, for a long time, I would, uh, I would run myself into the ground um, and get sick because that's the only way I felt worthy of a rest. Ooh, that's so true. Yeah. Like, right. Yeah. Because then other people would, oh, 
You've been working so You've hard. You've been working take so hard. Break. Take, a take a break. Take a break. And then I finally take felt like, time. fuck, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're working on before the meltdown, before the breakdown of the body, we are listening to the signals that the body is giving and trying to be more compassionate, be more compassionate. with self. You know, talking about yeah. this really <clears throat> reminds me of how much self-worth you kind of got to have to even get into this. Like mm. that's a tough step for some people. For most people. Like just yeah. like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to give myself an hour even if it's just an hour of your day, like there's like this kind of condescending, like, <laughs> oh, a, oh, a, oh, a mindful hour in the morning. That must be nice. It's like, could you please? Because you wouldn't be so rude. Like, <laughs> like could you give to Put yourself your a little more? Put your oxygen mask on first. Yeah. So what's with that self worth? How do we start finding that? Like, you were led through self awareness. Sounds like through religion, maybe. No, at first, or or not really. You were still externalizing the idea of I God. Ju I just wanted at the time. I just wanted to be uh, more creative, so I can create more stuff for for TV and, and for stand up comedy. That was the purpose in the beginning. This is you know, how we so, found this yeah, too through yeah, our craft. Just through our craft. I want to be yeah, better. I, I want to be better at my craft. <laughs> yeah, and that's where it started. And things got so deep that I started to forget about all that. And it's like, well, of a mm. sec, there's a whole me that needs to be worked on, and I need to start working with that. So I started off with working with the ego. Um, but as, as I was saying, when you get to the, to the level of uh, having a spiritual awakening, it's not even about the ego at that point. So you can end up having a full non-dual um, uh, uh, awakening and your ego still fucked. Fuck, yeah. That can still happen too. So, yes. Yeah, because these, these are two different things. So uh, I also recommend that people do psychotherapy and things of that sort because you can use that in combination with meditation. And, and all that, so I don't, and shadow work and things of that sort. So I, I recommend these things. How do you, thank you, I agree. How do you navigate diversity of thought with people that you love and care about? Ooh. Yeah, what do you mean? What do you mean Just like when, when people maybe <laughs> that are close to you, mm -hmm. um, for me, I think it would be like family. Disagree. Um, yeah, like what, but, but on like bigger, what feels like bigger issues? What feels like bigger issues? Yeah, like, like political, or what do you mean? Yeah, like when not just like an everyday disagreement. Like mm -hmm. I want a, a a coffee. Well, I want a hot chocolate. Like I don't know. Like not that kind of disagreement. Like fundamental life philosophy. Like core differences. value differences. Yeah. Give me an example of a core value. Um, what would come to mind? What's the person that comes to mind? Rip, when don't be scared. Yeah, <laughs> this is great. Um, cool. I think mm. my one of my core Rip, values. Is um, like leading with love. And who would disagree with that in the fam in the family? I think it's not that they disagree; it's that sometimes their reactionary behavior. It's not that they would disagree in, oh, like intellectually yeah. or verbally, but sometimes their reactionary behavior would um, show otherwise. That they may not have that. That may not really be that important to them if that's how they're oh, I acting. See. I see. So on your on your uh, um, list of values, that's high on your list of values, but somebody else is probably number three, number four. Yeah. That's that's a tough one because yeah. now we're talking about now we're talking about psychological development. Ooh. Right? Which is separate from states of consciousness. But the goal is to is to develop your your highest level of psychological development and also have your highest state of consciousness. So now we're talking about uh, psychological development. So if one person is at the egocentric stage and your partner is at the, uh, the world-centric stage, that's going to be a problem. Yes. Right? Because one person, um, they look at the world from, a, from an egocentric standpoint, where the person at the world-centric stage sees the world from a world uh, perspective because they don't just see themselves. They don't just see their group. They, have, they see the world. Yeah. They, they can see the world. But the person who you're with is at the egocentric stage. You're always going to butt heads. Because that mm. person only sees the world from a egocentric perspective, so that person with egocentric perspective, would, no, no, but, <laughs> right? but someone has to raise their their psychological de psychological development. It takes about five seven years to 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 move up these different stages yeah. per per level. Yeah. So that's not an easy thing, but at least but it's a start. And the time is going to pass by anyways, folks. Put the intention yeah, it's gonna in focus. It's going to pass by anyway. <laughs> Put the focus. Okay. Yeah. That was All right. such a well, great that's, answer. So psychological that's, that development that reminds would be me. the thing. Okay. And people yeah, yeah, can yeah. learn how to develop that. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and if they want to, it's not up to you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not up to you. 
Um, but even though I'm talking about psychological development, what you're referring to are traits. So even though there's psychological, like both of you could be at world centric, but the traits may not be at world centric. Right. Right. So again, if you go by the value of um, love or something or that, whatever, that would be the highest thing on your thing. That could be because um, your, 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 your traits uh, is at the level of world centric where the person's uh, same trait of uh, the trait I would be talking about in this case would be, let's say, emotional intelligence. So your emotional intelligence could be at a very high level where the other person's emotional intelligence is at a low level, though you both may be at world centric. Right. Right. So yep, that person now has to work on themselves in regards to raising um, their emotional intelligence to kind of match yours, because if the two don't match, uh, it's going to lead to they say that in most cases it leads to huge problems. Yeah. If two people are not the same or at least um, a state because you can be you can be uh, two states lower or something like that, a state lower, not state stage lower than the other. Yeah, it's still fine for ways to work it out because yeah. you may still complement each other throughout the different traits within that. Yeah, but that person would have to raise their love, their, felt their that. E- uh, emotional intelligence state to we, get to. <clears throat> we talk yeah. about that. We in different areas of the life, one person has had like an upgrade, and the other person's like, "Oh fuck, I'll catch up," and then they have a come up, and then the other person's like, "Oh, oh shit, shit, that's nice. I gotta, I, come, I gotta up. come up." Yeah, but you're, it's always been never more than two. Because it's really like if you're more than two stages away, you're on a different fucking planet. Different planet. Like yeah. your reality. A whole different realm. What's can't everything. exist. And yeah. I guess you could say yeah. if both parties also, you know, really believed in non-dualism, that could be a way to navigate that relationship. Maybe yeah, because you have something in common. But again, if two people have that thing in common, it's still totally different. If one person is in the non-dual stance, uh, state of being, mm-hmm. while right. the other one still has as an intellectual uh, Understand. belief or understanding. Right, still two different things, but at least you have something in common to work with. Yeah. So two people can be, uh, if two people are in different psychological stages of de- development, but they're in the same, uh, around the same state of, of state of state uh, consciousness, there is a way to make that work. But if they're both off, mm. good luck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Start so when people vibrate out of your life, or you vibrate out of other people's lives, like I, I feel like uh, as you age, you sort of start to find your groove in terms of like how you connect with people and connecting with people that work it feels really easy and then connecting with people that don't work there feels like there's more work involved to make that Mm -hmm. um relationship work oh fuck i forgot where i was going with this question prioritize the easy ones bless all the rest oh yeah when (laughs) when people start to vibrate out of your experience you know i really feel like there's a grieving process that um we don't really talk about like when we lose friends or like when we lose loved ones based on you know reasons that feel beyond our control it's just not working anymore like it literally can't be in the same space together anymore like it just doesn't work anymore how do you get how do you release that guilt what are you guilty of? Oh, just okay, here's an instance. I'm I know guilty. exactly what you're talking about. I, I connect with, especially artists, I trauma bond with them. And then once I realized I can't keep doing that, it's bad for both of us, I just turn my back on that person because that's the only way we connected. Oh. Was through trauma bonding. And then the, the le- leaving them in the dust made me feel guilty because I knew they just weren't there to win with me. Yeah. So I, I, you know, we've been together for 15 years, but I date musicians. I go through about four a year, and like there's... You, that, you, makes <laughs> that, that makes sense. You got to you yeah. get it out somehow, you got to get you know? it out somehow. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. I totally get that. You know? Yeah. It's just kind of... And hey, it's, yeah. it's usually a blessing. It's usually a collaborative project we come together on, and it's all love, and we keep moving, and we'll, we'll have another season. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, even a lot of people, I move the rise. Like, I have seasons. Like, we have That's seasons, right. you know? Yeah. And we come with together, and we all, we'll always be in each other's vortex. But there's been a couple, even personal relationships outside of work for me, that's like it been really hard to swallow that guilt of like, you know, on the surface I'm Mr. Fuck him, but deep down you feel, it's not fuck him. It's yeah. like I'm sorry, kind of, you know, yeah. like I'm sorry you're still there, but I'm not, so I gotta dip. <laughs> like, oh, that's interesting. Fucking tough. These are things I actually haven't thought. I haven't thought about things from that from that perspective. Mm. Um, but the whole the whole thing is that people do come in and out of your life, and everyone is a teacher. Mm. So regardless if it's, uh, it's, if it's long term or for a short period of time, that person's there to teach you something. It's to, it's to show you something about yourself because everyone is a reflection of who you are. So, oh, you're kicking my ass today, Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Smith. <laughs> well, Smith. speaking of psychological <laughs> development, wow, can we 
uh, dive into and, and you let us know about your book. Oh, Bodie, Bodie in the brain. In the brain. Uh, I sh I, sorry, I don't have a physical copy. Someone actually wanted to buy it, and it was the last copy I had, so I sold it to that person. Good. Yes. So, yeah. Buy these books. So, we'll, we'll put it yeah, we'll put the link in the Just description. Pre pretend yeah, that it's here. Do. I'll, I'll yeah, put pretend it in it's post. here. You can put it because yeah. there's. I have an image of it. You can put up if you like. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we'll it, get uh, that. You can do that. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, but it's uh, it's called Bodhi in the brain. Bodhi is actually an, a word, a Buddhist word for enlightenment. Yes. Uh, so like Buddha, he meditated under the Bodhi tree before he. Uh, when he received enlightenment, mm. so that's the word, that Bodhi. So that's where that word comes from. So Bodhi, B O D H I, right? So uh, um, I came up. I, I wrote the book. Is is based on Unity, the med my meditation program. It's based on that how how the, how this works, what it does, the benefits, what it's done for other people, what it's done for myself. So it's pretty much a book that um, my editor, who is also a good friend of mine. I met her, actually, I met her during an ayahuasca ceremony. Yes. So we became awesome. friends. Yeah, we became yes. friends. Uh, she's the one that introduced me to 5-MeO DMT, because uh, people know I've done an NDMT many, many times. And she introduced me to 5-MeO DMT, which I read about, but just never actually did the actual substance. So we've done a lot together as, as, as cool. friends and colleagues. So she uh, got on the energy program, and uh, these things, certain things were changing or were happening in her in her awareness and she would call me and ask questions lots of questions and she says and she said like is there a site or something that I can go to to read up more of this information I was just like no all it's this me. information's in my head <laughs> <laughs> and she goes you need, you need to get this down on paper and she's like listen I'm an editor so if you ever ever feel that you want to get this stuff out of your head uh, let me know because I can help you put that stuff together so I heard it, and, and it didn't even, like, I heard it, and I just got off the phone and just went about my day. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, some time went on, and I said, gosh, I, I should put something together because I, everyone who's used it, I, I want to make sure that they're taking it seriously because some people just think it's just sounds. It was yeah. into nature sounds because it's covered with nature sounds, right? And people just think, oh, I'm just listening to something. I'm like, no, 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 no. There's sacred there's a, geometry. Yeah, there's a technology underneath that yes. that synchronizes your brain. The two hemispheres of your brain. I'm trying to get people to understand this, <laughs> right? Do you understand this? It's not just the uh, it's not just the thing that you put on. You listen to flowers or not flowers. You listen to bees or listen to to birds. It's, it's, it's act. There's actually yeah. A it's not ASMR. It. No. <laughs> yes, that's so I funny. Love that. Right? It's, uh, that that is um, that is uh, purifying the nervous system, uh, synchronizing the brain, and so on. So um, I started putting this book together, and, but then uh, the same uh, spiritual guru, uh, Paramahamsa Vishwananda, was back in town. Yes. Cool. So he came in town. So prior to him coming to town, uh, or at least prior to our Darshan session, I started writing the book. And then I met up with him. He blessed me again. Yes. And I finished the rough draft of that book within two weeks. Wow. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, oh. within two weeks, I had that all done. So he, he first put that that blessing on you and he touched your head and then your body went through all that experience? I, I, didn't, I didn't go through that. It, it was the same guy. Okay. But that happened in 2019. But this time... Uh, I, I met him many times online after that. So okay. we've done many uh, online darshans online, but this was the second time meeting him, which yeah. was last year, uh, December, uh, September 2nd. <laughs> All right? So he came back, but this time he didn't put your hands on your head. He just looked into your eyes because of COVID, right? Yeah. So he would just look into your eyes for 20 seconds. So I went to see him again in person, looked into my eyes for 20 seconds. I went back home and I went back and, and within two weeks the book was finished. <laughs> Open yeah, the channel. So this is, Open the channel. Yeah. And also yeah. this is just like where uh, I think sometimes I'm still in a place in my life where I like feel like I should be doing like especially I'm a stand-up comic as well so like for real? I, yeah. I mean I know that. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. Give, give a brother Thank a death. Look at that. I didn't you. know that. Yeah, yeah, almost. She's out here, yo. Almost two we years now. Here. I put a show together so we could do it do it together. Discipline Stoners Live. You gotta come to the next one. I do my live band freestyle thing. Oh, she yeah? does stand up comedy. Oh my god. She's yeah. out here. Yeah. Hit the open <laughs> mics too. Yeah. Open mics and everything. Oh, yeah, right. well nice. like when you met me when I was at Rise, I yeah. was hustling, all that, yeah. all those open yeah, mics, I have she's to, doing that's the same what thing. I'm doing now. <laughs> Past two years. That's yeah. amazing. Actually I took a stand up comic uh, to an ayahuasca session years ago. Nice. Yeah, I don't know what ever happened to this guy. I gotta, yeah, I gotta find him. He's I'm, still, yeah. Yeah, I'm very interested in ayahuasca. I just feel like it'll happen when it's ready. When it's you ready. Know? Yeah. But that's like one of the things where I, I believe in that divine timing. Mm -hmm. But like when it comes to like my career, I'm like, no, it's not divine timing. It's, <laughs> it's me 
like pushing and doing everything and then there's guilt when I don't sit down to write for an hour every day yeah. because I think that's how you should gain success or something like I have weird beliefs a about it um, let me find my thought pattern again uh, I don't know. I lost it. Doesn't matter. It's all yeah. good. Yeah. Probably will come back. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, I can I'm sure. Try to will. answer it if I can. If, once it comes back, what's well, yeah. yeah. comedy. Yeah. No, I was just. I w It was in the. Uh, I think maybe I'm just understanding that I have more guilt that I need to process <laughs> because it was coming back to the point of like when you, oh, divine timing. When you don't do. Like the, the I should be doing that feeling. Do you ever get that feeling or do you you're fully in flow now? Sometimes I get that feeling. Um, th the way I look at it is everything that is happening within the universe is supposed to happen. God is perfect in every way. Even if someone says, I don't believe in God, I'm with you. It's the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> no God. I understand God. That. Same thing. Yeah. Yes. All right. So whatever is happening in the universe that allows everything to operate in, in motion that's supposed to happen. That thing, if I feel guilt for something in one day, that's supposed to happen because there's something that's happening much bigger or, yeah. that's, hap that's coming out of that. So yeah. whatever hap is happening is supposed to happen. Even yeah. my thought of saying, maybe I should change that. That's what's supposed to happen. Everything's happening as it is. So in the moment of a spiritual awakening, of a full-blown spiritual awakening, you get that too. It's like, oh, everything's happening perfectly the way it's supposed to happen. Because we think it's all about us, as the individual. It's like, me, me, me needs to change. Me needs to whatever. Yeah, maybe you do need to change. But that's the universe that's doing that, right? And, and it's manifesting through you, right? To play out your function, to do whatever it needs to do, because we can't see ahead. We don't know what's going on in the future. We don't know any of that. But if, you, if a person has this non-dual spiritual awakening, it all becomes clear. Yeah. So even if I come back from the experience and I say, oh, gosh, there's things I need to work on. That's what I'm supposed to do in yeah. the moment. Because when I came back from that experience, I started making clothes that I, I don't even sell them. I just make them for myself that says Praprahan in, in, in uh, Sanskrit. Right? People ask, what does that mean? I said, it means like what people would say, Parabrahman, right? But it's Praprahan. Mm. Right? And people say, oh, I just felt the need to do that because I need to express. Yes. Right? I, started to, um, I started doing the blog, which I try to write uh, an article these every day. And um, that's just something I felt like doing. Uh, I started doing, uh, working with um, uh, the intellectually disabled because I felt the need to do it. Okay, it's something so I wouldn't have done before, but I just felt the need to do it, so I just do it. So these are just things that I need to do for whatever reason. I'm just doing it <laughs> because I just feel in this moment that's what I need to do. Yes. And whatever is happening, it's happening perfectly. Um, I, I, I can argue, some, one may argue and say, well, is it your will? Is it not your will? And my, my thing is, it is my will because, again, I am the essence of everything that's ever, I'm the essence of, I am the essence, I am the very ground of being that's creating everything to exist. I am that. So um, and you, any choice that I make and any choice that you make, it is our will. It's just not necessarily the will of Morgan or Eleven. It's the will of the ground of all being that creates everything to exist and that allows everything to be as it is um, because that's how it is. That's I, just what it is. You have the tools as Morgan to give those gifts. So like the will conversation is based on what you like to focus on. You've developed the ability to do and perform and give. So there's your free will right there. It's like what you focus on. Like you can help the intellectually disabled because you are very intellectually able because <laughs> you've taken the time. You can write a blog because you wrote like TV, right? For yeah, 10 wrote, years. Yeah, I was so, also, yeah, I was so, also the, one of the writers of the show. Yeah. So, so you have this skill that's a gift to give because you've used the time here to like develop and manifest that. So it's like, I think that's the free will right there. Sure, like the yeah. tools that you have, because you're being guided I'm to being do those things. Guided to do that. But what's guiding me to do that? Yeah. Me. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's where you land on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm absolutely everything and everything, but not just me, but everything outside of me, everything within me, all of it is of the same source. And this is where you get the term absolute monism from. Because that's what Advaita Vedanta is what I practice. So uh, absolute monism is what they're really talking about. So when people talk about non-duality and all that, it's part of it, but it's about absolute monism. Everything is up to up one divine singularity. And that one divine singularity, everything that's manifested from it, is not just manifesting everything from it. The very thing that is manifesting is it. It's just from a different perspective. Yes. So in, the moment, in, the, in that moment of that 
absolute uh, monism in in that in that moment of this awakening, you realize that everything, even locations, uh, time and space, is all of the same source. Yet on lower levels, it is manifesting that thing to become what yeah. it is. But in that state of of absolute monism, everything in the entire universe, time and space, absolutely everything is happening right now. And that's what they actually re refer to as eternity. And I, it don't mean eternity as like time going out this way. All of that is happening right here. It's such a right now. Such a huge concept to like grasp. Okay, you know why? <laughs> it's just, you know why? It's a huge Cause, concept cause to grasp. You're sorry, because you're trying to understand it. Yeah. Uh, intellectually, and that's almost near impossible. But so I can feel it. Here's where I landed on the action with the understanding of this. Just dance. Just dance. If someone's <laughs> looking at you for a time period, we get caught in looking us, this point of consciousness, looking at that point of consciousness, observing us and separating it. Or like thinking that there's some sort of judgment or preconceived idea of the other. Whereas if we're coming from the perspective of it's all one at the same time, whether I'm walking by this lady at the Grove who's like staring at me and I think she's giving me stink eye, just dance. <laughs> or if you're on stage in front of a thousand people, just dance. Or if you're like intimately just with someone, try to do your best to make that energy just move, right? It's like, it doesn't even matter how you come from, like, it is all just the same thing moving for also itself. Moving for itself, <laughs> by itself. Are you ever, do you ever find yourself trying to convince people of mm -hmm. your knowing? Sometimes, it, it, it could be like I'm trying to convince someone of that, but there's nothing I can do about it. I can't convince someone of that. Because even if you got it intellectually, it's still not it. Yeah. So after a while, I was like, it doesn't, it, it doesn't even help if I try to convince you or not. Yeah. You'll either fall, to it, fall into it or you don't. Yep. And even if you don't in this lifetime, you will in another one. Uh, there, there's no time on this. Uh, yeah, but there's, there's cases where if I'm having a conversation with someone, it's like, I want you to get this. Yeah. You know, and people's like, I, I don't want this. I'm rejecting it. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, ah, <laughs> then, fuck. Then reject Yeah. Because yeah. one time, one time um, a, a, a church minister, uh, um, he's a brother of a friend of mine. He read uh, the last book that I collaborated with. I collaborated uh, with this book. It was called um, uh, The God Behind the God with uh, Arian Herbert. You remember that book, right? Yeah, back in the day, because I got you to do a little... Thing for a little promo thing for it back in the day. Yeah, it was like eight years ago. <laughs> yeah, right. Love and that. Uh, uh, he just this guy. He just called me. Was it last year or the year before? He called me like the year before and says, "Hey, I just read your book. I want to meet up." So we met. We met up, and uh, he, his first thing was, uh, "This is not the Christian way." Oh. And, we got, and we got into it. And in that moment, I wanted him to understand where I was coming from. But at the end of that, it didn't matter if you understood or not. It didn't matter because that conversation was supposed to happen for whatever reason so that everything else in the universe can do whatever it needs to do because of the karma that was created from that cause. That so you're really up. intertwined. You, you, you're next level. You, you've, accepted, you've accepted your role as an entity. As an entity within this, this universe. This whole yeah, situation. As, as the ego known as what we call Morgan. Yeah, but that was supposed to happen in a way. And I got passionate in the moment because I felt that I should defend my position, yeah. but it didn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> matter if they believe or not. It Having matter. that so experience good. once, okay. has that led to um, less defense of position in future similar conversations? I think so. I think so. Yeah. As time goes on, um, but it, it, it just depends on the conversation. Because uh, I, do, I do a little thing myself, uh, I don't really call it a podcast, but I have these conversations that we record and we put them up online, just organic conversations with people. I love it. And uh, one time, one of them got kind of challenging, but only because I just felt that, um, like, like, like he di felt like I didn't know what I was talking about. Ooh. Yeah, so it's like... He was dismissive of your perspective? Or, or No, he was for the perspective. Okay. He was for it, but he felt that, well... You don't have to do all that. All I have to do is just take this entheogen and get there. I'm like, listen, <laughs> as we're having this conversation, can you say that you're in the sense of oneness right now as we speak? And if the answer is no, I'm saying it's not enough. Mm. You have to have a meditation practice. You have to have at least self-inquiry. Right? You have I to agree. be a practice to... to 100%. To, yeah, you can't just do this because your nervous system is going gonna, is gonna to change. Your brain uh, structure is going to change. The, the noddies in your body are going to purify. All those things need to happen so that when you have the sense of oneness, you don't go insane 
as you continue to carry this with you day in and day out. Because as we're speaking, I'm still in this. Yes. Oh. Right? Not to the same degree, <laughs> yes. but I'm still in that. Like, I can see why. You're coming why, from that. Yeah. And also just like, yo, why not the discipline of it? Like, why not? You have to give yourself, like, the wisdom, especially of the East, like, like Buddhist perspectives. Like, just do whatever disciplines almost welcome you into them. So if someone's telling you meditate, but it's hard, it's like, now that's your life work. Like, like I've recently fallen on the fact that I need to play more keys. It's like, mm -hmm. I'm not done this chapter <laughs> till I can sit and play keys Until and sing a keys. full song. Yeah. So it's like, that like thing that's like, you're like, no, just take this drug and get there. Or you're like, okay, use these tools with it. That perspective that you wish to attain right now, that's apparently a heightened version of your existence, which a tree doesn't judge a leaf and a grass, and a grass doesn't judge a tree by the big and what role it's playing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so that's even dismissible. But yeah, like go with the discipline. Just like the fucking discipline. enjoy the hard thing. Yeah. I don't I don't necessarily enjoy meditation. It's same, it's yeah. tough to sit down. It sucks sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Right? But I just do this because I enjoy the benefits that comes out of this thing. There was a period of time after having oh. the, that that um, the, the the full non-dual blowout for two years, I every time I meditated, an experience happened. So an experience Whoa. would happen every day for like two years. That's so intense. That was that was incredible. And when it stopped, it's like, oh now I'm back to sitting, my legs crossed and going through all this pain for an hour. Dude. But for two years, I'm like, oh my gosh, this meditation thing is incredible. Yeah. But uh, after that, it stopped. I've got there yeah. like 20 times in my in my five years oh, yeah. of practice. I'd, I'd, make, I'd, make, I'd, I'd go and start <laughs> meditating and all I see is just pure light just yeah. booming out of, just beaming out of my, my brain. I'd wake up <laughs> in a psychedelic trip, just wake up out of my sleep and I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. I feel like I'm on, yeah, like all these things were happening. It was incredible. I love that. It was incredible. It's magnificent. Yeah, and then after when it stopped, uh, it stopped. And then when I went to see uh, Paramahamsa Vishwananda last year, mm -hmm. it happened again for a few weeks, mm. right? It happened again for a few weeks, and in December I had another spiritual experience. Nothing compared to what happened in, in 2019, but I had, I had three more. I had three more after that. But um, after when I met him, uh, every day when I meditate, something similar <coughs> would happen again for about a few weeks, and then that dissipated. Yeah. And then I started having him again this week. Nice. Uh, but oh, not so full good. blown, just like a few this week. Still, I was like, oh, this is nice, nice to be in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah mm. But um, in most times, I'm meditating and I'm sitting there for an hour as I'm chanting in my, in my, in my mind. I'm, I'm saying in my mind 120, uh, 1,000 and, and 20 times, um, who am I? I am that. Who am I? I am that. Who am I? I am that for an hour while listening to Unergy. Wow. Right? I'm just keep definitely doing that over and over like want to try that immediately. But, you know, I'm going to do that immediately. Yeah. yeah. Who oh, am I? God. I am that. Who am I? I am that. You just keep repeating it. You can do it different ways. You can do it in your inhale, in your mind, say, who am I? And with your exhale, I am that. Inhale, who am I? With your exhale, I am that. Over and over and over again. And you'll, <laughs> as you get, as you try to go through it, you're going to mess up. You're going to fight you're yourself. Gonna, yeah, fight yourself. You're going to stop for like a, a, a few seconds. You're going to forget that you're doing it. You're going to probably end up falling asleep for a second. You wake up, oh gosh, who am I? I am that. <laughs> who am I? I am that. Oh my gosh, who am I? <laughs> fuck, I am, oh gosh, who am I again? <laughs> Who the fuck am I? Yeah, it's hard to do. For me, what was just happening of my like freestyle slide mind is that keeps changing. And that is like my positive affirmations that I want. But I'd be curious to see where my imagination goes after about 10 minutes and I have all my Bentleys and things that I am that of in my like intentional mind. Uh, and then what's behind that? And what's behind that? I, I'd, I'd be curious to see like my forced intention, yeah. what I really believe myself to be, and then eventually what I probably really am, which what is everything. Probably, yeah, which is <laughs> everything and anything. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Holy. Of all things. What yeah. a way to peel away that. To peel away, yeah, because you're peeling away. That's why I always have an issue when people talk about ego death. It's not that everyone's talking about the same thing. Mm. Sometimes when people are talking about ego death, they're talking about the layering of the, of the, the stripping of the, mm. of the ego. But it's not actually an ego death. An actual ego death is when you psychologically die. Put it to rest. Yeah, like, there is no you left. There's no you even saying, oh my gosh, I'm going through this right now. Because there's no I'm there's to There's no say. I to say anything. <laughs> you almost need no social death. insurance number. Like, you <laughs> you're going to need a new one. Be because, <laughs> yeah, you're going to be ripped apart to the point where there's no you left. Yeah. And all you are is, uh, if you want to call it God, if you want to call it uh, Brahman or Brahan, if you want to call it uh, Jehovah, if you want to call it Abha, if you want to call it Allah, it doesn't matter. Or if you want to call it no thing, uh, Anatta, Anatta meaning uh, no self. 
all that happens in, in, that, in that moment. And then there is no 11 left. There is no Winnie. There is no Morgan. It's just pure being. It's beyond name and titles. Like, you're not thinking about the name and title in that moment. You're just, it's just pure being. And you realize that you're everywhere, every when, every how, everything. Absolutely everything that's ever happened in existence and will happen is happening right now, right here, in this time, space, <laughs> beyond time and space, within time and space, within the ego, outside of the ego, and you realize that you're all egos and you realize that you're none of them at all because you're, you're making them all up because <laughs> they're all just different divisions of, who you, of yourself. Yet, at the same time, you're absolutely one and always been and always will be. It has never changed. And it's by far the most miraculous, profound experience, which is not an experience, there's no need to experience it, that could ever happen to an individual. And for some strange reason, I happen to be one of them. I don't know why. <laughs> Just happen to be one of them. But it is oh, by I'm far so, I'm so grateful you are. the Thank most you. profound thing that could ever happen to a human being. And for some crazy reason, I happen to fall into that. And I am truly grateful for it. Because, wow. Wow. What a, way what a life changing event. <laughs> I, I, it's, so, it's so profound, I don't want it to happen again. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think I can go through this a second time. Like, I, yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. I'm still speechless about this experience. There's a time when I, I talk about it, I just start crying as I'm talking about it. It's yeah. like, man, I got to man up. I got to. No. <laughs> no, I feel that. No, yeah, you do not. I mean, that, no, oh, my gosh. Express. Yeah. So oh, it, yeah. It is so powerful. If you weren't so like rooted in truth and authenticity as a person anyway as you go through those things i'm sure this happened in its own way but i notice when people say like when i'm going through some sort of transition like that when you do realize that you are all powerful you can't play the roles in life in certain relationships that you always did when you were living in old patterns and you go through this like almost like self-cleansing of like any relationship that nurtured any role that you were playing that kept you away from knowing that you were that god mm -hmm. <laughs> like that's you know wow, that's that's quite the experience you keep yeah. cycling and, and it's supposed it's supposed to be ideally it's supposed to be that way yeah but at the still at the end of the day whether you're in a, a good relationship or a shitty one doesn't matter <laughs> from the whole grand scheme of things none of that really yeah. matters everything doesn't is as fucking it, matter. the ego cares about having a better relationship <laughs> Yeah, and well. the ego should care about having a better relationship. So as the ego is trying to, 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 to make better relationships and to do this and to do that and make, and make it better, a better place for humanity, whatever the case is, whatever that's happening within that ego, that's what's supposed to happen. <laughs> it's right? So I'm not telling people not to change. Yes. I'm just saying that's what's supposed to happen. You're mm -hmm. supposed to experience that at that time. I always have that. Yeah, yeah. When you got apart from certain things. I don't know why that's been such a prevalent thing because I think that's the biggest hurdle to for mm. some people to choose that God in them is, but then I can't be this to this person. You know, they're going to need me to enable them or... <laughs> that may, that may be the case. They're going to be yeah. alone at the bottom. Yeah, I, I feel like sometimes I'm making sacrifices and I speak I speak a lot just about on own experience because I, I can't talk about else anyone else's. Yeah. But like I'm making sacrifices sometimes uh, to serve like my higher purpose or at least I hope, I hope that I... How can you serve your higher purpose? Oh, that's the higher a, purpose has no need of serving That's you. a good question. Yeah. The higher purpose is your higher purpose. That's why it's quote unquote higher. It, it, it doesn't. It doesn't need you. Eleven, you can't <laughs> leave me alone with this guy. It doesn't need you. Wait, listen to Morgan. Okay. Whatever wow. you're doing is for your higher purpose. <laughs> oh. And I'm not saying don't do anything to change. I I'm know. I'm just saying that's what it is. I have a hard, I've always had a hard time making decisions and it takes me a really long time to make a decision but once the decision has been made I really lock in mm -hmm. um, and so I feel like over the course of my adulthood I've been trying to get better at making decisions. Ten years ago I would have told you that I just started choosing what's for dinner. Like that's where I started. I was oh, like I'm just going to start choosing what's for dinner every night and, uh, and then we'll go from there in terms of decision making. Yeah. But I feel like sometimes I make the wrong decision, but I'm doing it. They made the wrong decision for you. Made and maybe the for the person that you're trying to serve or please. 
But that's not the case from Ultimate Source. Oh, you're killing me with this, Morgan. <laughs> I just want to clarify. Right? You're you're supposed to do that within that moment. my ass right now. <laughs> from Ultimate Source, that's what's supposed to happen for it to function for, for what it's doing. For Holy it. shit. He's permanently I get it. there. I just right? got it. I just yeah, got it. That's just what Ultimate Source is doing. Right? You're, indec you're indecisive, indecisive for a reason. And I'm not saying don't change that, yeah. but if you decide to change that in any way, if it can be changed, it's because it was supposed to change. Right? It just looks like that I am making the choice to change when it's not really you, the ego, that's doing it. Right? You're just the program, if you want to say from that standpoint. You're just the program doing whatever it needs yeah. to do to do whatever benefit for the entire universe. All right? All right. Well, He's we're done here. <laughs> what else is there left to say? He's permanently there, Wen. He is permanently there. Uh, You've got to tap into Morgan. It, it's like the being able to interface uh, with that perspective is such a blessing, bro. Thank you for blessing us. My pleasure. My yeah, pleasure. this has been my profound. Pleasure. Thank you so much. I just wanted to clarify one thing. Uh, when Wynn said that she chooses what for dinner is what she'd tell me to make. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 100%. Sorry, I thought that was clear. <laughs> <laughs> I tell Eleven what, what we're to, having what for we're dinner, having for dinner. And, and he's executing. After all that, I'm going to end that off with my ego wanting credit. <laughs> okay, where can no, we find yeah, you? Man, where? Man. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't put it in rhyme, bro. That's, that's perfect. <laughs> That's You're hilarious. perfect. Oh, you, man. where can you find me? Where yes. Can you find me? Yeah, where should we follow you? Um, we're going to link your book oh. down below. Uh, if you go to my IG page, uh, uh, what is it? At Morgan O. Smith. Yes, that's what that's it is. What it, yeah, Morgan O. Smith, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and you'll find my link tree. You'll find all that stuff in there. So. Awesome. But you we'll, can find the book we'll on Amazon, and Barnes & Noble, um, a Chapters Indigo. It's all there. Awesome. Yeah, all, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Congratulations on the book. Oh, thank you. Congratulations yeah. on everything. Working on the second one right now. Awesome. Um, and uh, hopefully that will be out next year. No, great. We're going to update when yeah. we do your audio program and then when oh, you're on again, you. yeah, I'm going to you. tell you how my brain feels. <laughs> <laughs> give it time, though. Give it time because yeah. you may it, – it's different for different people, right? Mm. So give, um, let some time go on, maybe at least we, four or six months and see where you're at on the first level. Oh, and yeah. And when you're done, hit me up and get the second level if you feel like you want to continue. But it's some very powerful stuff, and it's life-changing. And uh, I'm just looking for people who will take it and stick to it because the benefits that comes out of this stuff is absolutely – my, my last 20 years, this journey for the last 20 years, have been the most mind-blowing 20 years. I'm 51 years old, so this is like the, like the most prof like, uh, profound 20 years of my life. It's just, the, the last 20 years has just been incredible. Awesome. Um, minus the sexual dysfunction, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, it just incredible. To all everyone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what that's what they always tell. Me. It happens to everyone. <laughs> oh, good, thank you. <laughs> Helps the ego, you know. I didn't think but it was know. everyone. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm everything. Ooh, uh, is that the title of the show? Everything and everyone with Morgan. <laughs> That's it is. It is how Everything it's supposed to be. Oh. <laughs> I think it's it's how it's it is how, how it's, it's supposed, supposed to be. be. Yeah, yeah. I feel that. Dude, thank you for how blessing us. Be. Love yeah. you, man. My Appreciate pleasure. You. My thank pleasure. you so much. Everyone out there and thank you. Subscribe. Check out Morgan. Like uh, this video. Share it with a friend. You know, someone needs this episode. I needed this episode. So this please is a great bridge send it off. That conversation you want to have with that person. Send them this, and then you guys can start from there. Bless. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, bro. My pleasure. Bye. Bye. Oh my goodness. Discipline stoners. What's your discipline? You a stoner? That's cool. So are we. I'm high a lot. It's weird to finally say that with pride. I'm high a lot. Being high has helped me with my anxiety. It's helped my social skills. Well, it's helped me feel okay about my shitty social skills. It doesn't make my social skills better, but it sure does make sitting in that awkward moment in a social interaction a lot more bearable. You know, that moment where no one in the group has anything left to say, and you desperately want to yell at all of them to just say something? Being high makes that hilarious and not torture. Yo, yo, yo. It's 11 from Anger Town. This plant just helped me 
chill out, found focus, found confidence. All of a sudden I was productive, less protective, more progressive. Yeah, we talk about stuff like I'm a next sommelier, but this is about a medicine, baby. We wish everyone a mindful life. It's been a helpful tool for us. Whatever the route to peace, it's each individual's journey. And the more we communicate, maybe we can all help each other out. Love and light. Welcome to Discipline Stoners Podcast with your host, Eleven. And my name is Winnie. And we are the gateway drug to mindfulness. yesterday you cunty cocksucker <laughs> and then sometimes I'll just completely forego the first part and I'll just be like you dirty little cocksucking motherfucking bitch and I'll kind of lean into my own reflection and I'll touch touch the mirror and my lips will touch the mirror and I'll just kind of <laughs> and then I'll be like oh my god what are we doing <laughs> I just came in here to tell you that I loved you like in a platonic way and then that happened. I didn't mean for it to happen, but it was really good. Should we do it again? No, no. I just need to take a break from you, you beautiful, beautiful whore. So that's how my affirmations are going. <laughs> Everybody together. One day we're gonna do a collage of all the times like a brilliant person has said like it's medicine. Cannabis is a gift from Mother Earth. Cannabis helped to heal me. Those natural medicines that we use to help to heal us, and of course they have this euphoric effect or can. It's an alternate natural way of healing. <laughs> And I just think it's so beneficial and there's so many good properties to be. I mean, that's the only difference in my life is I've added cannabis. The amount I've changed and the way our family has evolved and our relationships with my adult sons and everything, mm. like just all through cannabis has been, it's been amazing. It's part of my life. Like you said, you really can't separate me and uh, the cannabis plant. I use it medically. Yes. I have fibromyalgia, diagnosed with fibro very, very young. And I use, um, cannabis to treat my fibro very effect effectively. It was through um, an event that caused her major anxiety that I got her to take a few puffs. Yeah. And it, it helped. Yeah. Right? So, so you know, from being up here to being able to cope. You know, we've got naturopathic medicine and natural health products that rely on hundreds of years of traditional use. Yes. Which you know, both cannabis and mushroom technically fall under. Yes. Uh, if you can keep it at that sweet spot and it's in a healthy way, I yeah. feel like that's... Yeah. that's <clears throat> It's, it's medicine. Yeah, I it's, think it's medicine. You, you have to like yeah. check in with your life That's and be like, medicinal. I felt like it complimented my personality. Yeah. Almost. Good answer. It's okay to use cannabis as their medicine. Mm -hmm. They no longer deserve to be in classrooms and hear that they're using drugs mm. and they're bad. When this is medicine that is saving their lives. Yes. I mean, I would never put anything on the market that I wouldn't give to my mom or my grandfather. Those strains are fantastic for pain management, nausea. This helps like oh. it, with pain management. And I feel fantastic. Like, like I feel great. Um, do so I attribute good. it to cannabis and cannabis oil? Absolutely I do. Relationship to cannabis right now is um, beautiful, growing, uh, most probably everlasting. I think this is medicine. Dude. 120%. I've got ADD and I would, I'd use cannabis to help kind of focus me in and kind of turn things off. Like it very much is medicine. It was medicinal for me. It was, it was like taking a medicine because it, that's how it worked.